Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Roberts with Kelly Roberts Wellness and I also own a studio in Bethany, Delaware called Beach Pilates and Wellness. Um, I have been getting a lot of feedback from you guys. I'm loving the comments. I hope you guys are getting the results that you're looking for um, as much as I love teaching Pilates and helping everybody out there. If you feel like this can help someone, feel free to share it. Um, if you love the YouTube page and of course subscribe. But I thought today that we could do um, some scapular work. So I have lately been having a lot of, with my EDS, a lot of what they call rib slipping, which is actually like a subluxation where the rib pops out and then of course it doesn't feel good because it's exactly where you're breathing and your lungs are expanding and it usually comes from the upper back being tight or kind of stuck. So I thought we could work on some exercises that will actually work to strengthen the rib cage to pull the ribs closer to the spine so that you don't get that popping. I have a winging scapula and that comes again with the EDS and the connective tissue disease that I have, but it causes my rib cage to pop. And then if you see me ever do like planking or try to do a push up, my, my scapula like pops out. I actually, every time when I go to Pilates conferences, they always pull me up on stage because everyone thinks it's cool. Not really, but <laughs> or my, my scapula has popped up higher. So I've been working a lot on trying to get it to close down because it keeps sliding out a lot lately and sometimes the chiropractor's not getting it back in. So a lot of the exercise that I've been doing is actually helping. So if this is something that you have a lot of, you can totally use these exercises. Just be aware of your pain level and what you think your limitations are. And of course, don't just rely on exercises, but these are enough to try to get you to stay mobilizing and um, keeping that rib cage drawn in, it tends to flare anyways, especially with women, we kind of flare a little bit more. So all you need is um, little hand weights. If you want, if you have water, bottle, water, water bottles, then you can use those. So if you have water bottles, you can use those. Or if you have like little two, three pound hand weights, don't go any bigger than that or heavier than that because it's, it's not gonna help. Um, if you have like a exercise band, mine has, handles on it, but you can just use those regular elastic bands. And um, if you have a bolster, this is a great one. You want something that's not as hard. There's like blue and white out there, but a pink one is good. Sometimes they're smaller. If you can get one that's longer to use and you can get your whole body on it, that's the best so that your head's not hanging off or your tail is not hanging off to get into your lower back. Um, and if you have a squishy ball, we might use it, might not. So. We're going to start on the mat to start, and you just want your balls to start with, and we're going to start on your back. So remember your neutral pelvis. You should be able to slide your fingers between your mat and your back, and you should be able to stabilize your pelvis. So everything from the hip down is going to stabilize you. Your hot cup of coffee should go on your bladder. When you lay on your back, rib cage usually automatically pops up. So you're gonna to have to think of closing down, kind of pinching your rib cage together or drawing your scapula, which is, it glides across your back. So kind of close down, it should feel like right underneath your armpit. This all kind of works together. So upper back and rib cage all work together. So what we're gonna do is just some scapular retraction and this is good for posture also. So arms are gonna start straight up from your shoulders. And if it's too much with weights, you can drop them and just use gravity as your resistance and assistance. But you wanna think of someone taking your hands and pulling them or your wrists to the ceiling. And then you're gonna drop your shoulder blades back into the mat wide so that your collarbone stays wide. So it's just a reach out and it doesn't feel like you're doing very much, but just these small movements are gonna open up your collarbone, pulling your shoulder blades back to help you stand up you just have to be aware, I dropped this ball so you can see, that this has to stay, or this side wherever you tend to flare and get that subluxation, are going to have to draw together. And it really comes from your abs. So you gotta pull your belly button to the spine, draw your rib cage in, and then open back up. So again, it's a reach out and the exhale to drop back. You're just letting gravity drop the shoulder blades. And again, like I said, it doesn't feel like you're doing very much. If you're tight in your upper back, you're gonna feel it because you're pulling that scapula together and then you're just reaching out of that spot. Right, so be aware of your pelvis. You don't wanna be tucked back, so remember glutes don't fire. So we're reaching up, exhale, pull back. One more. All right, we're gonna turn your hands in. So hopefully everybody can see. 
When you push up, you're gonna rotate your thumbs in towards each other and then open back up. So you're moving a little bit through that rotator cuff, but you're drawing in and down, the scapula down the back, to allow the rib cage to pull together. A lot of it comes from breath. Pilates is perfect for the breathing that you want when it comes to that slipping rib syndrome. And that is to inhale through the nose and expand your rib cage left to right. And then as you exhale, think of blowing out 80 candles on a cake, your belly kind of falls with it. So when you take that breath in, you should feel your rib cage open up and close out. And I'll do an exercise for that too. So rotate in and then open back up. Good. And you really only need to do like one set of 10 a day. And if you can't get to that much, then just do what you can. All right, balls are gonna go off to the side. Bring yourself up, you're gonna grab your band. And you're just gonna put it in between your feet, right around the arch of your foot. Or you can put your feet down if you feel like it's gonna slide off. All right, you're just gonna do a row. So everyone tends to shrug up when they row, and row really high, and that's not what you want. You wanna pull down and back. This is my so you're gonna pull down and back. So I'm just gonna choke up on my band. It's too long for me right now. So sitting up really tall, exhale as you pull back, pull your elbows towards your body and back behind you. And you're gonna squeeze that scapula together as you pull back and kind of pinch it together <laughs> and then resistance forward. So again, work on posture. Exhale as you pull back, inhale, reaching away. So it should feel good, especially if you're tight, you should feel that pull and that pinching together. And this is just gonna strengthen the upper back muscles so that it doesn't allow you to round forward and kind of get that pull across the rib cage. So usually it comes from upper back tightness, so we tend to round forward and then it gets weak and it pops out because it's so tight and, and long back here, this gets short and weak and then the rib cage or the rib pops out, which never feels good, believe me. When you can't take a breath in without pain, it's awful. So squeeze and pull back and down. So again, be aware, as you get tired, you're gonna start to shrug up. You gotta hold those shoulder blades down. Think of pinching pencil in between, I always say chicken wings or your scapula. One more. Good. All right, so again, you don't wanna go overdo it. So just start with 10 once a day, and if you feel like you can build up, then keep building up. All right, we're gonna go on your bellies, and you're gonna kinda go out to a T. If you have something like a yoga block to put your head on to lift up, it'll help you breathe, especially if you have a rib out, trying to lay down on it, it might not feel too good. So you can put a, a blanket or a towel or something to lift your head up, or if you're comfortable to put your head down to the mat, you're just gonna drop your head, but you don't want it to be tilted forward. You want to keep your, your pelvis kind of tipped underneath you and your abs are tight so this doesn't get any tension. All right, so you're not going to lift your head at all. It's going to stay to the mat and you're going to take your thumbs and flip them to the ceiling. So what you're going to do is you're going to lift and squeeze to pull back behind you and then back to the floor. So again, it doesn't feel like a lot of work, but just that movement of that pulling that scapula behind you is going to help squeeze and strengthen those muscles to pull the rib cage in and to lower back in. So if you can't get up this high right now, then just go where you feel comfortable. So you're just going to lift where you're comfortable and you still get that squeeze. And again, thumbs up to the ceiling help to open up that shoulder and rotate it back. So these are all the exercises that I've been doing since my rib won't tend to stay in. I think it's because of the way I'm sleeping which we can't really change, you automatically go into that fetal position. So you just have to find a way to maybe prop up your back to open up if you feel like it's from sleeping or sometimes when I do too much rotation teaching, it slides out too. You're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna bring your arms up to a Y. If you don't feel like you can get to this point yet, then don't do it, skip it. Just stay here until you feel like you get the movement. If you're more on an intermediate level and you feel like you have the control to do these, it's the same thing. Lift up, and again, you're not gonna be able to go up very far because you're gonna end up shrugging to lift. You wanna hold that shoulder blade down to lift up 
and lower. So this is a really tough one right now, even for me. I have to really work to get my arms up off the floor. So again, it depends on how you're feeling that day and don't forcing any exercises to make you uncomfortable. Just use your core and then again, skip that one if it doesn't feel good. Last one. All right, bring those elbows in. We're gonna come up on all fours. All right, and you're gonna kind of almost do like a cat and cow, but not really. It's kind of like you're gonna do a push up. So you're gonna sink, hopefully you can see, my shirt probably wasn't the best one so that you can see the opening and closing of my scapula. But you're gonna sink down, so you're kind of widening as you sink your chest through and you don't go far and then you push back just to level. So this is staying more level across. You can get into a little bit more rounding if you want to, but it's better to stay as long as you can and just draw almost like you're gonna drop your sternum or your collarbone to the floor and then push back up. Good. So that one I might have gone a little bit too far. I have a little bit more flexibility through my spine from doing Pilates for so long. And trying to show people sometimes the modification is, is harder for me than actually doing the exercise. So again, you're dropping into it. And again, this is going to try to flare on you. So you have to stay like you're pulling it into your body. Your rib cage is staying down the back. So again, watch the shrugging, holding it down, opening, and then that sinking down. Okay, one more. So again, it doesn't feel like you're doing a lot, but it's strengthening those muscles to help pull back together. If it gets too much on the wrist, you can kind of do it out wide too on your forearms and do the same thing, keeping your knees to the floor and opening and pushing. So up on your wrist might be a little bit more of an intermediate exercise to do the opening and the closing. Just remember to keep your core tight. All right, another thing to do, if you have a wall, these are the things that always helped me when I had all my neck injury stuff, it's called a wall hang. And you kind of hang yourself, so you have to find a door that you can hang yourself through, but you only want to bring yourself into the door hang while your elbows are down the back. So maybe I'll save that one for another time, but you can kind of do the same thing with a bolster. So if you have a long bolster again, or you're gonna order one, try to order a pink one because they're softer, especially with people with EDS, because we have so much things dislocating and subluxating and everything else that we have going on. So a softer one's gonna feel better because of the tightness and everything that we have. So you're gonna just roll yourself down. Just make sure you're stable taking yourself to the bolster and you want your head to lay so the crook of your neck or like right at the base of your skull should be on the bolster and your tailbone should be on the bolster. So I'm about 5'11 and I can fit on here. So if you find just a regular pink one, it should be good. All right, feet are gonna go to the mat. And if you don't have a bolster and you wanna do this, you can roll up a, like a beach towel and let it run from tailbone to your head and then make sure that you're on it too. Or you can bring it where it just comes across the rib cage. So we're gonna do two exercises on the bolster. So one is just to open up and try to drop your hands to the floor. So I lived like this for years because I was so tight from my car accident and the forward head syndrome that I got from the, the reversible, irreversible neck damage that I did. I would have to lay on the bolster for like three or four minutes a day and then you get off of it. So I wouldn't recommend starting that way. So right now I can feel this huge pull right now to coming across my chest. I used to have to put blankets up underneath my elbows and that's something that you might have to do is to hold your arm and then you just lay into it. And it's really just a relaxing exercise. It's gonna do what I just said, of opening up and getting that stretch across the chest. So if you're really sore and tight, I would only do 30 seconds of this. And again, if you need the modifications, roll up towels or blankets, stick it under your arms so, because you're not gonna be able to get your arms back here. They should be able to lay to the floor. So 30 seconds of that and then gently roll yourself off the bolster and then you lay back to the mat and just let your spine come back naturally to the mat. So you should feel like, again, just that little bit of movement that I just did 
I already feel like I'm more open across the chest and the rib cage. Another one to do is to stick the, the bolster a long way and it's gonna go across your upper thoracic. So my tightness I know is between like T4, 5, 6, and 7 is where I usually get stuck and that's because I have a little bit of scoliosis. So you want your feet to the floor and you want your tailbone or your sacrum almost sitting on the floor. Don't lift up and go back. You're gonna cradle your head so that you keep your neck protected. Just remember you don't want to crank, so just let your head fall heavy. And you're just gonna reach back. So right now, I'm tight just from sleeping this morning, and this is a big stretch for me. If you can get yourself back to get that opening, then take yourself back, and then you just bring yourself back up to keep the control. Now, if you have pots and you drop your head back and it tends to bother you, which happens to me often too, don't go all the way back to where you feel like you're going to get dizzy and faint. Just reach back and keep your chin a little bit tucked and then bring yourself up. If you're okay to go all the way into that extension of opening the rib cage and then abs to bring it back in. And if it doesn't feel comfortable, if you need to slide it down, like. I usually have to work through it a little bit more to get in, you know, right under the shoulder blades right now. I can get open a lot more just because it's more open up there. And you can start there and work your way down. So again, these are just some exercises to think about. Don't take yourself into something that you know it's going to make you uncomfortable, but just working on these every single day will make all the difference in that slipping rib. So every morning, part of my personal practice is these exercises and I have something that's called an oof. Also, it kind of forms your body a little bit better than the bolster, but they're hard to find and they're expensive. It's kind of a Pilates piece of equipment that you kind of need somebody to help you with until you get the hang of it. But that thing is amazing too, to get all that opening. So again, all you have to do is three to five of those and just sit back into it to get that opening. And I already, I feel like I'm completely open through the collarbone and wider here. And I can already feel that this is closed down where it usually sits up high. So it's hard to see with what I have on today, but you can usually see that it sits up higher, right side sits higher than left. So those are just some scapula work to get that help for that slipping rib. So I hope that is some help. And if you have questions or comments, feel free to email me, message me on YouTube. I always try to reply. And I love hearing back from you guys. So again, ask questions if you feel like it's helping. If you want to see something else, let me too, know too. And then remember, just don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep seeing some more videos pop up. And again, if you want more help, um, I am working on some stuff specifically for EDS, hopefully in the future. Um, as this is being recorded, we're actually in quarantine for this coronavirus. Um, I just shot in the studio. but. If you want to check out kellyrobertswellness.com, I have a membership on there and there's a lot of beginner stuff that you can kind of pick and choose from if you want just guidance from me. So thank you again and we'll see you next time.